Section 5 of The Destination of Man by Johann Gottlieb Fichte. Translated by Jane Sennett. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Chapter 5 Knowledge Wondrous Spirit. The Character I, read by Kevin S. Spirit, read by Larry Wilson sorrow and anxiety corroded my heart i cursed the day which recalled me to an existence in whose truth and significance i could no longer trust i awakened in the night from unquiet dreams but i sought in vain for a ray of spiritual light that might lead me out of the labyrinth of doubt in which i had become entangled once at the hour of midnight a wondrous spirit appeared to pass before me and to address me poor mortal i heard it say thou heapest error upon error and fanciest thyself wise thou tremblest before the terrible pictures which thou hast thyself toiled to create take courage to be truly wise i bring thee no new revelation all that i can teach thee thou already knowest and i need but recall it to thy remembrance i cannot deceive thee for thou thyself wilt declare me in the right and shouldst thou be deceived thou wilt deceive thyself listen then and reply to my questions i took courage the appeal is to be made to my own understanding and i will rely on its decision he cannot force me to think otherwise than i do think what is to produce conviction in me must be the result of my own reasoning speak wonderful spirit i exclaim whatever thou art speak and i will listen question me and i will answer thou wilt admit that the objects thou seest around thee really have existence out of thyself certainly i do and how then dost thou know of this existence i see them hear them feel them they discover themselves to me through all my senses indeed thou wilt perhaps presently be inclined to take back the assertion that thou really seest feelest and hearest these objects for the present i will speak in thine own manner as if by means of thy sight touch and hearing and by them only thou didst perceive the real existence of objects but observe by means of thy sight touch and other senses or is it not so dost thou perceive them otherwise than through thy senses and can an object be said to exist for thee otherwise than thou seest hearest it etc by no means objects are therefore perceptible merely in consequence of a certain modification of the external senses thou knowest of their existence merely by thy knowledge of this affection or modification of thy sight touch etc the phrase thou hast employed these objects exist out of myself resolves itself into this i see hear feel and so forth this is my meaning and how then dost thou know that thou seest hearest feelest and so forth i do not understand thee thy questions appear to me unintelligible I will endeavor to explain them. Dost thou see thy sight, and feel thy touch? Or hast thou a higher sense, by which thou perceivest the affection of thy organs of sense? I have not. I know immediately that I see and feel, and what I see and feel. I know this immediately and absolutely. I know it because it is, and not at all by the intervention of any other sense. For this reason thy question appeared strange to me, because it appeared to throw a doubt on this immediate perception this was not my intention i wished only to induce thee to make clear to thyself this immediate perception thou hast therefore an immediate consciousness of sight and touch thou art conscious of a certain affection of thyself doubtless i am thou hast a consciousness of thy seeing feeling and so forth and thereby thou obtainest a perception of the object couldst thou not perceive it without this consciousness canst thou not perceive the existence of an object by sight or touch without knowing that thou seest or touchest certainly not it is then the immediate consciousness of thyself and of the modifications of thyself which forms the necessary condition of all other consciousnesses thou canst not know anything without knowing that thou knowest it certainly i cannot therefore that objects exist knowest thou only inasmuch as thou seest touchest them and so forth and that thou seest or touchest thou hast an immediate consciousness in all perception thou perceivest only thyself 
and thine own state, and what does not affect the state is not perceived at all. I have already admitted this. I would repeat it in every variety of form, if I saw reason to doubt that thou hast thoroughly comprehended, and permanently impressed it on thy mind. Canst thou say I am conscious of external objects? By no means, if I speak accurately, for the sight and touch by which I perceive objects are not consciousness itself, but only that of which I am first and most immediately conscious. Strictly speaking, I can say no more than that I am conscious of seeing and touching. Remember then that thou hast now clearly understood that in all perception thou perceivest only thine own state of being. I will, however, continue to speak thy language, since it is most familiar. Thou hast said that thou canst see, hear, and feel objects. But then with what attributes dost thou see or feel them? I see this object blue, that red. When I touch them, I find this smooth, that rough, this cold, that warm. Thou knowest then what is red and blue, cold and warm, smooth and rough? Undoubtedly I do. Wilt thou then explain to me what they are? That cannot be explained. Look, direct thine eye towards the object, the sensation of which thou art conscious, through thy vision, I call red. Touch the surface of this object, what thou feelest, I call smooth. In the same way I have arrived at this knowledge, and there is no other method. But can we not at all events, from some of these qualities, known immediately by sensation, deduce a knowledge of others differing from them? If, for instance, any one had seen red, green, and yellow, but never a blue color, had tasted sour, sweet, and salt, but never bitter, could he not by reflection and comparison attain to a knowledge of what was blue or bitter, without having ever seen or tasted either? Certainly not. What is matter of sensation can only be felt, not thought. We cannot obtain it by deduction. It must be by immediate perception. Strange! that thou shouldst boast of a kind of knowledge which thou hast attained thou knowest not how thou hast asserted that thou canst see a quality in one object feel one in other hear one in a third and thou must therefore be able to distinguish sight from touch and both from hearing without doubt thou wilt maintain further that this object is blue that red this smooth that rough thou must therefore be able to distinguish red from blue as smooth from rough most certainly and this difference has been discovered according to thine own assertion not by reflection and comparison of thine own sensations therefore perhaps by comparison of objects out of thyself this is impossible for my perception of objects proceeds from my perception of the variations of my own state of being and depends upon it by these variations only do i distinguish objects at all I learn indeed to connect these sensations with the arbitrary signs, red, blue, smooth, and rough. But I do not learn to distinguish these sensations themselves. This I do immediately. I cannot indeed describe how they differ, but I know that they must differ as much as the sensations they produce. And thou canst distinguish these independently of all knowledge of the objects themselves? I must so distinguish them for my knowledge of things in themselves depends on these distinctions which knowledge is obtained therefore merely through thy consciousness of the various states or affections of thine own being by no other means but in this case thou shouldst content thyself with saying i feel myself affected in the manner that i call red blue smooth rough thou shouldst assert nothing further of these than that they are sensations existing in thyself and not transfer them to an object lying entirely out of thyself, and declare them to be modifications of those objects, whilst they are in fact only modifications of thyself. Or dost thou by calling things red, blue, and so forth, really mean anything more than thou art affected in a certain manner by them? I perceive that I really know no more than what thou sayest, and that transposition of what is in me to something out of myself is very strange, though nevertheless I cannot refrain from it. My sensations are in myself and not in the object, for I am myself and not the object. I am conscious only of my own state and not of that of the object, and if there be any such thing as consciousness of the object, it can be neither sensation nor perception. Thus much is clear. 
thy conclusions are quickly formed let us look at this matter on all sides that i may be sure that thou wilt not some time or other wish to draw back from what thou hast now freely admitted is there then in the object according to thy usual conception of it anything more than its red colour its smooth surface and so on in short anything besides the characteristic marks of which by sensation thou art conscious i believe there is besides these qualities there is the thing itself to which they belong a supporter of these attributes but by what sense dost thou perceive this supporter of attributes dost thou see it or feel it or what or is there perhaps for this a peculiar sense no i believe that i see and feel it indeed let us examine this a little more closely art thou then conscious of sight absolutely or only of seeing certain things my consciousness of sight is always limited to certain objects and what was this limited consciousness of sight with respect to the object before us that of red colour and this red is something positive a simple sensation a certain state of thine own existence this i comprehend thy conception therefore should be simply of a redness and nothing more but the conception is nevertheless of red extended over a broad surface a surface which thou dost not see how is this i believe i can explain it though it is strange i do not indeed see the surface but i feel it when i pass my hand over it and as my sensation of sight remains the same during that action i imagine the red extended over the surface since i always see the same red it may be so if thou feelest only a surface but let us see if this be really the case thy sense of touch is not absolute that is thou art always conscious of touching something certainly sensation is always definite we never merely see or hear or feel but always see colour red green blue feel smooth rough cold warm hear the voice of man the sound of the violin let that be settled between us once for all willingly and in what thou hast called feeling a surface thou art immediately conscious of nothing more than of feeling smooth or rough and so on certainly this smooth or rough is like the red colour a sensation entirely simple and i ask why this simple sensation should be extended in thy conception over a surface any more than the simple sensation of sight this smooth surface is not perhaps in all points equally smooth but is merely so in various degrees only that language does not afford me any signs by which to express their differences i distinguish them however unconsciously and conceiving them as placed by the side of each other i thus form the conception of surface but canst thou have opposite sensations at the same moment be affected at the same time in such different ways by no means those various degrees of smoothness which thou hast assumed in order to attempt to explain what thou canst not explain are nevertheless nothing more than various successive sensations i cannot deny this thou shouldst then describe them according to thy real experience as existing successively to one another in time and not as simultaneously existing in space i see this and i find that nothing is gained by my assumption but my hand with which i touch the object and cover it is itself a surface and by it i perceive the other surface which is also a greater one since i can spread my hand several times upon it thy hand is a surface how dost know thou that how dost thou attain the consciousness of thy hand at all is there any other way that by means of it thou canst feel other objects or that it can be employed as an implement or tool or that thou perceivest it by its touching some other part of thy body no there is no other way i feel with my hand some other object or i feel the hand itself by the sensation of some other part of my body i have no immediate absolute consciousness of my hand any more than of the sense of sight or touch in general let us take the case merely in which the hand is regarded as an implement for that will decide at the same time the second in the immediate perception of it can lie nothing further than what belongs to touch and to sensation in general to that which leads thee in consciousness to regard thyself as the conscious being 
either thy sensation is of the same kind in which case i cannot see why thou shouldst extend it over a surface and not rather conceive of it as a point or if thy sensations are various why thou dost not conceive of them as succeeding one another at the same point that thy hand should appear to thee as a surface is just as inexplicable as the idea of a surface in general do not employ what is itself unexplained to explain anything further the second case in which thy hand or any other member is itself the object of sensation it is easily understood from the first thou perceivest it by means of another part which then becomes the sentient one i ask the same question concerning it and thou wilt just as little be able to answer so will it be with every other surface it may be that the consciousness of extension out of thyself proceeds from the consciousness of thine own extension as a material body and depends upon it but it is then necessary to explain this extension of thy material body it is enough i perceive clearly that i neither see nor feel the superficial extension of the properties of bodies i see that it is my constant practice to conceive as extended over a surface what nevertheless in sensation is merely a point and to represent as contemporaneously existing what i know only as successive i discover that i proceed in fact exactly as the geometer does in the construction of his figures extending points to lines and lines to surfaces seems strange that i should do so thou dost what is yet more strange this outer surface this extension thou canst not indeed truly see or feel or perceive by any sense but at least thou canst see red upon it and feel smoothness but why dost thou extend this surface to a solid mathematical figure and assume the existence of an inward body beneath the surface canst thou see it feel it or by any sense recognize its existence by no means the space within the surface is impenetrable to my senses and yet thou hast assumed the existence of an interior which thou hast not perceived by any sense i confess it my surprise increases what is then this something beneath the surface i conceive of it as something similar to the surface something tangible we must examine this more closely canst thou divide the mass in which thou hast imagined the body to consist i can of course i do not mean with instruments but in thought divide it to infinity no part can be so small as not to be further divisible and in this division dost thou ever reach a point at which these particles become no longer perceptible in themselves i say in themselves that is not merely with reference to thy senses i do not sensible perceptible absolutely or with certain properties of color roughness smoothness and the like undoubtedly with certain properties nothing can be sensible or perceptible absolutely without reference to any property that can be perceived this is but to extend to the mass the susceptibilities that belong to thyself which lead thee to regard what is visible as colored what is tangible as rough smooth and the like yet these things are only certain affections of thine own organ of sense or dost thou think otherwise by no means this is merely a necessary inference from what i have already admitted and yet thou hast in reality no perception but of a surface by breaking it i could perceive an interior so much thou knowest therefore in advance and this infinite divisibility in which as thou hast maintained thou canst not reach a point at which the atoms become absolutely imperceptible hast thou ascertained it by experiment or canst thou do so certainly i cannot to sensations therefore which thou hast had thou hast added in thy conception others which thou hast not had and canst not have i am sensible only of a surface i am not sensible of what lies beneath it yet i assume that it exists this i must admit and when brought to the test of experiment the real sensation is found to correspond with thy preconception certainly when i break through the surface of a body i find beneath something perceptible as i have before said but thou hast also spoken of something beyond senses and not perceptible to them i have asserted that in the division of a corporal mass to infinity i can never come to what is in itself imperceptible 
although i can never make this division of the object therefore we have nothing remaining but what is perceptible what possesses the property of producing sensation and this perceptibility thou hast extended through a cohesive mass divisible to infinity so that the true supporter of attributes the object which thou hast sought must after all be nothing more than the space which it occupies although i cannot be satisfied with this but must still conceive in the object something more than this property of perceptibility and the space which it occupies yet i must confess that i cannot explain what that is confess whatever really appears to thee at the moment to be true what is now dark will presently become brighter and the unknown be made known the space itself is not perceived and thou canst not understand why this perceptibility should be extended in conception through a space just as little canst thou understand how the idea of something perceptible out of thyself has been attained since thou art really conscious of a sensation in thyself not as the property of a thing but as the peculiar affection or state of thine own being i see clearly that i perceive in reality nothing more than my own state of being and not the object in itself i neither see it feel it nor hear it but on the contrary precisely there where the object should be all seeing feeling and so forth comes to an end sensations as affections of myself are simple and have no extension they are not contiguous to one another in space but successive to one another in time i do however conceive them as contiguous in space and it appears to me that it may be exactly at this point this extension and this changing of what is only a perception in myself to something perceptible without me that a consciousness of the object arises within me this conjecture may be verified but could we raise it immediately to a conviction we should yet attain to no clear insight for the higher question would remain to be answered why dost thou extend thy sensation through a space let us then immediately state this question i have my reason for this in the following more general manner how does it happen that from thy consciousness which is nothing more than consciousness of thine own state thou proceedest beyond thyself in order to add to the perception of which thou art conscious a something perceptible of which thou art not conscious end of section five